spending on nuclear weapons around the world soared last year, with the United States investing more than every other nuclear-armed country combined. That's according to a new report by the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. Nine states have nuclear arms, the US, the United Kingdom, France, China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel. Now, according to the latest figures, in 2023, they spent a combined total of 91.4 billion US dollars, an increase of 13% on 2022. The US alone accounted for 80% of that rise, while China was the second biggest spender with Russia third. And Susie Snyder is the program coordinator at the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. She's a co-author of this latest report. Susie, welcome to DW. Now, what are those countries which have nuclear arsenals spending the extra money on? Well, every one of these countries is modernizing their arsenals. So they're spending the money on new airplanes, new submarines, and new missile systems to deliver nuclear weapons wherever they want on the Earth. It's only nine countries, but it's a huge amount of money. We calculated about $3,000 per second spent in 2023 on weapons that most of these countries hope never to use and that really should never be used. Yeah, 30, no, $3,000 per second. That is a huge amount of money. And the U.S. alone accounts for 80% of the increase that you documented for last year. What conclusions do you draw from that? Well, the U.S. spending is goes primarily into the hands of private contractors. So within the U.S., there are companies that are making a profit building these weapons of mass destruction. Companies like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman that take home major contracts. In fact, we profile 20 companies in this report that have contracts for the next decades, uh, totaling over $387 billion. And it's unfortunate because all of these countries have promised to negotiate nuclear disarmament, and yet none of them are doing it. In fact, they're making massive investments of taxpayer money into decades of potential destruction with these weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. Staggering numbers, really. Your figures refer to the nine countries that officially possess nuclear weapons, though. What can you tell us about countries developing nuclear weapons like Iran? Well, we know that Iran does not have nuclear weapons. And there are 44 countries in the world that have the capacity to build nuclear weapons, and the majority of those have chosen not to. Iran has not yet crossed the thresholds to decide to make nuclear weapons. And we don't analyze countries that don't have them. We focus on the nine that do and the nine that need to end this wasteful spending and redirect it towards long-term useful security, like the nearly 100 countries that have joined the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons that reinforce the norm that nuclear weapons are unnecessary for anyone's security. And in fact, we're better off with negotiations than we are with weapons of mass destruction. You are not the only ones looking at this issue. Your colleagues over at the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute also just released a report stating a higher reliance on nuclear weapons worldwide. Are we returning to a world under threat of mutually assured destruction here? Well, based on our calculations, we're certainly re returning to a nuclear arms race. And with spending at this level into new nuclear weapon systems across the board, it's of dire concern to everyone. The thing is with nuclear weapons, the impact of these weapons do not stop at the border. You cannot use a nuclear weapon and hope, oh, it'll just only injure those on a battlefield. These are weapons designed to cause mass civilian harm. And that is a huge problem. So I am very concerned that we're re-entering a, a false concept and a false logic of where nuclear weapons seem to have value, when in fact, they, the only thing that's kept them from being used so far is luck. And luck is not a good security strategy. At, we don't have too much time, but I do want to look ahead. You campaign for a nuke-free world. What will it take for us to get there, and how realistic is it, given the state of affairs? Well, I believe that it is not only possible, it is absolutely necessary, and it's so much easier 
to get rid of nuclear weapons than it is to deal with other global existential crises like climate change or negotiating some rules of the road on artificial intelligence. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons is the way to go, and it's what we encourage all states to engage with and join. Susie Snyder from the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, thanks so much for your time.